Alright, now we're going to talk about the aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration in greater detail. Now, I showed you earlier that the glucose are converted first to pyruvate and then to your uh, carbon dioxide and water as well as energy. Now, for the glucose to convert to pyruvate, it must take place within your cytoplasm. So what happened here is that we know that the mitochondria, we learned this in chapter 2, is the powerhouse of the cell. So within the mitochondria, what happened is that it produces ATP. But this ATP is not straight away formed in the mitochondria. The processes before that takes place at the cytoplasm, within your cytoplasm. What happened here is that your glucose are broken into three carbon form. So the glucose molecule is a six chain carbon. It's a cyclic in nature and it is broken into three, two different parts. And this is what we call as the pyruvate. This makes it simpler for our mitochondria to break down. So as it enters the mitochondria, it is absorbed within the mitochondria where the pyruvate undergo the process of glycolysis to complete it. In the glycolysis process, what they do is they split up the carbon to carbon bonding and this releases energy and the energy that is being released from the breaking of bonds causes the adenosine diphosphate to bind together with a phosphate molecule forming adenosine triphosphate one molecule of glucose are able to form through this process about 2,898 kilojoules of energy. And this is everything that you need to memorize about your aerobic respiration. Now, when we take a look at an anaerobic respiration, the mitochondria are completely removed from the equation. What they do is that the glucose molecule are straight away converted into lactic acid. So from your six ring carbon, it's broken down into a three carbon form. And this lactic acid due to the breaking of the carbon bonding only releases about 150 kilojoule of energy and the breaking of this bonding because it breaks up it produces two ATP now the lactic acid don't remain in the body for a very long time what they do is that for human, this lactic acid are then carried to your liver. And within the liver, what they do with the lactic acid, they use up energy from the aerobic respiration to change it back to glucose. What happened here is that it's going to take the energy from aerobic respiration and this lactic acid will re-enter back into aerobic respiration. So there is a compensation between these two processes where they need to rely on one another and that compensation process is known as oxygen depth. The difference between these two processes is oxygen. Now, Assuming that I'm running a one kilometer sprint, running at that speed require my muscles to consume a high amount of oxygen. When your muscle consume a high amount of oxygen, your body might not be able to compensate for the oxygen. Reason being, your brain uses up more oxygen compared to the rest of your body. The same thing happening with your heart. Now, as your muscles start to use up energy, sorry, to use up oxygen, the oxygen supply in body decreases.
you don't have enough oxygen in the body to supply for your muscles but your body still require that energy so what they do is that the aerobic respiration is switch to anaerobic respiration and the reason this takes place is so that it can supply sufficient energy to muscle A muscle can still operate without any oxygen. As long as it has enough ATP, it can still carry out the contraction and relaxation processes. But this is very detrimental to our muscle tissue. When